We're gonna give the old square air box that I made previously, uh, give it another shot. And, uh, but we're gonna have to do it with the modification to the bottom of the cowling for uh, a blister so that air box will fit. So we have the square air box mounted, test fitted, and we'll put the cowling back up again to see where the conflict is. Mark those locations at the bottom of the cowling and that's where we will start working on the blister for the bottom of the cowling. The reason why I elected to go back to the square air box was the modifications would be one step as opposed to two steps for either this aluminum housing or this fiberglass housing. With the square box, all I need to do is add the blister to give it the room for the box to fit. If I used either one of these two housings, I would, I would still have to make a blister, but I'd also have to modify the front somehow uh, to get it to adapt to the nose bowl. In this case, I will have a lot of, of room, I'll have a lot of flexible skeet tube. Uh, I won't have to worry about that. I can just mount this flange to the front of the box, use the skeet tube, and should be good to go from there. So here we have the cowling test fitted back onto the firewall and the nose bowl. Just simply have a Clico holding it on. The nose bowl will not connect because this is the problem we had originally with the air box hitting the bottom of the cowling. So you see my Sharpie that I use to mark an outline of the area that I'm gonna have to blister so the cowling can come up and we'll have that uh, space we need to continue on with that air box. We'll also be able to put this uh, alt air door back into service. And then the connection between the front of the air box and the nose bowl will be just this flange I over engineered for the uh, aluminum housing, but it'll still serve a purpose. It'll be mounted to the front of the air box here. And then you can just see I've got about five inches, maybe four or five inches for my scat tube, my skeet tube to be uh, installed. So that'll give me the flex I was looking for. So hopefully this will be the solution to the problem. So we have the bottom cowling turned over and uh, you may have seen this in a previous video. This nose bowl is fiberglass and this bottom cowling piece is aluminum, but I fiberglass the two of these together so it was all one integrated piece. So what I'm trying to avoid is I'm not gonna start the blister immediately off of this seam it's going to start somewhere right maybe an inch or so behind it the goal is i don't want something to stand out that looks like a sore thumb that people walk up to the airplane and say what the hell is that uh, this should look like an integrated piece of the nose cowling um, very modern sleek look my only concern is well it's not my only concern but there will be some disturbance of airflow going back towards the tunnel where this lip was designed to create negative pressure to pull air out of the cowl to cool the engine. Uh, this is going to almost shield a big portion of that. Um, so we're just going to have to see what kind of cooling performance we get. If we do have engine cooling problems, the solution is going to be to extend this opening.
All right, so my conclusion after using the spray foam is don't use it. Uh, the corners curl up and the core or the inside really never cured. So it just left a big void on the bottom. So it's just, that's, can't use it. Instead, I went ahead and used this uh, two-part marine foam and this is the way to go. It's obviously more expensive, but the results are just uh, perfect. Ended up with a piece like this, uh, totally solid throughout. The bottom follows the shape of the cowling. So um, we'll just take this over to the bandsaw and start cutting and shaping. Okay, so the uh, foam is set in place. It's been shaped, beveled on the edges. Um, made a nice little straight bevel across here so it gets wider as you go out, narrower towards the middle. Um, I did have to shim this left side a little bit to bring this left side up, which will actually, when it's flipped over, it'll be, um, well, it'll be on the left side as you're sitting in the cockpit. Um, all of this is hot glued to the bottom of the cowling and uh, right now I'm going to just take some resin. I'm using uh, West System epoxy resin and uh, the 206. I'm using the slow hardener. Um, I had the fast hardener but slow really doesn't seem to be all that much uh, well, let me just put it this way. Fast is not that much faster than the slow. So once I apply the resin to the foam, I'll let it set up and then I'll come over that with uh, packing tape and the packing tape will do the same thing as it did on the cowling. It just creates a release. Uh, then I'll have a, a nice surface for my layup. Um, I'm going to use fiberglass. I do have carbon fiber, but really, um, 
I don't see a big weight difference. I'm just using a bi-directional fiberglass. Makes a very hard finished product. This will not actually be a blister where it's incorporated into the cowling. Uh, I think I'm going to just put a small flange on it all the way around so that way it can be removed. Um, I can pop it on and off and get to the air box and anything else I need to get to from the bottom. I'm going to look at this as a glass half full situation where I've installed something on the bottom of my cowling that gives me access to the cowling without actually having to uh, remove anything. So um, let's just be optimistic about this whole thing. So uh, let's see, this, this will set up in about two hours and then uh, should be in pretty good shape. Hopefully uh, this evening I will have the layup started.